Okay, I think we'll get started. So today we're going to talk about halogen bonding. This is another type of specific interaction uh, in the category of intermolecular forces. So it stands apart from the generic in intermolecular forces, much the same way as halogen or as hydrogen bonding we talked about last time. While it's not as prominent as uh, hydrogen bom bonding, of course, uh, it is a good example. And uh, uh, unfortunately, it doesn't really make it into the Gen Chem textbooks. So you probably you won't see it in the whatever Gen Chem textbook you're looking at. So I thought I'd talk about it here to give another example of a force similar to hydrogen bonding, where uh, the types of elements involved, or the types of molecules involved, and how they interact, the angles and the distances are important uh, rather than generic, like with other um, intermolecular forces. So this occurs between halogens and hydrogen bond acceptors, acceptors being those that want to accept the H and donate their electrons to the hydrogen bond or the halogen bond. So for example, uh, water, um, ni nitrogen, fluoride uh, compounds as well can uh, hydrogen bond so then they can halogen bond. Here's a typical interaction of this uh, trifluoral iodo methane and uh, we're seeing a uh, halogen bond between the iodine and the oxygen. And what happens, uh, particularly for uh, the heavier halogens like iodine, uh, is that there is an electron withdrawing through the sigma bond into the sigma bond here that leaves on what's called the distal side or the other side of that bond. So we're going to blow up on here a region of electropositivity. So a partial positive region. So we often think about the halogens as being electronegative, but the back side of this sigma bond, particularly if there is a strong withdrawing groups over here, then will expose the nucleus, leaving uh, a partial positive region. And that is called a sigma hole. So the sigma hole appears on the distal side of the bond uh, for iodine in this case. There's a more of a richness actually to halogen bonding than there is to hydrogen bonding. Hydrogen bonding just has this partial positive of this exposed hydrogen as the electrons are um, uh, pulled by a more electronegative atom. But here actually, as we start to progress around the top of the iodine, there is a region of electroneutrality and then a region called the electronegative belt that is actually electronegative. And so you, you have an, a partial negative up here and the partial positive sigma hole. Now when it comes to uh, halogen bonding, most of the time uh, they'll be referring to interaction with the sigma hole. Okay, well, let's look at some of the trends. You may have noticed here I've got fluorines rather than uh, what might be more typical hydrogens. And uh, again, this is due to the mechanism. If we have very electronegative system back here, that will pull more of the electron density. So these fluorines will be pulling electron density through sigma bonds away from the carbon, which will make the carbon want to pull more away from the iodine and leaving a larger, more pronounced sigma hole. So as we compare the size of the sigma hole or the strength of the sigma, uh, yes, the strength of the sigma hole, um, and hence the potential for a strong halogen bond, uh, this compound with the fluorines, the much more electronegative fluorines than this compound with the much less electronegative hydrogens will have a much stronger sigma hole and have a much more energetically favorable uh, halogen bond with say water or ammonia, any, any of the regular hydrogen bond acceptors. 
Now, the other thing is polarizability. So as we go down the table in the uh, uh, halogens, uh, two things happen. One, we get a, a bit of a longer bond here. We become less electronegative and more polarizable. So uh, the, the upshot of that is, again, this mechanism that withdraws through the sigma system and exposes that distal side will be more pronounced in iodine uh, than bromine than chlorine. And fluorine, uh, as far as I know, I don't think uh, fluorine uh, really is involved in halogen bonding. I, I might be wrong on that, but I, I, don't, I haven't come across that in the literature. Um, definitely iodine strongest. Uh, I have seen uh, some halogen bond studies with both bromine and chlorine. Now, these have found a lot of uses. Now, we know of just the profound impact of hydrogen bonding, uh, just water alone, uh, and the fact that we exist at all uh, has uh, hinges strongly on uh, hydrogen bonding. Nature has evolved to uh, utilize hydrogen bonding extensively. Not so much halogen bonding because there aren't as many natural compounds involving um, involving uh, halogens. Although I, there is some sense that perhaps uh, the iodine in the thyroid uh, hormones are, is involved in some sort of um, halogen bonding. I'm not sure if that's been definitively um, proven or not, but I've seen that discussed before. Uh, definitely though, in man-made systems, the self-assembly uh, of uh, nanomaterials, uh, so in nanotechnology, uh, halogen bonding can help to self-assemble different bits because the orientation is direct, the bond is directed, and so that can help with that. Extensive literature there. Uh, in fact, it's, it's the largest body of literature for uh, halogen bonding. But also in biology, uh, there's some interesting applications with uh, artificial nucleotides. So um, we know that nucleotides and DNA interact via hydrogen bonding, but that can be this can be synthesized to include iodines and other and bromines, I believe, uh, to uh, become nucleotides and actually um, be incorporated into uh, bits of DNA. So some very interesting work being done there. All right, so that's halogen bonding. So we now know of two of these specific interactions that stand apart from the generic intermolecular forces, uh, the ubiquitous hydrogen bonding, and now uh, halogen bonding. So again, uh, your book won't have a section on halogen bonding, uh, but uh, hopefully with this lecture uh, and then um, maybe just uh, looking up uh, halogen bonding on, uh, on the internet, you can um, get comfortable with, with the ideas of halogen bonding.